In this video, we're going to talk about a beautiful approach to probability. And I find it beautiful because it has a lot to do with common sense. And before we get there, let's, let's put our common sense hat on and look at a few statements. I'm going to write a few statements down and you're going to tell me which of them make sense and which of them don't make sense. The first one is the probability that it will rain tomorrow is 30% or 0.3. The next one is the probability that it will rain tomorrow is minus 20%. And the last one, the probability that it will rain tomorrow is 0%. Which of these statements make sense to you? Which of them are not making sense? Okay, let's look at the first one. It's going to rain tomorrow and the probability is 30%. 30 is not a good number. There's more chance that it will not rain. There's less chance that it will rain, but it's still, still making sense. So the first statement makes sense. What about the next one? Minus 20. Minus does not make sense. But maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Let's skip this one. Let's move to the last one. The probability that it will rain tomorrow is 0%. What does 0% mean? Well, 0% means that it's definitely not going to happen. There is no chance that it's going to rain tomorrow. It's sunny today. It was sunny yesterday. And it's basically one of the hottest days of the year. There's no chance that it's going to rain. So the probability is 0%. This is still making sense. So can we go lower than 0%? Well, we can't go lower than 0. 0 means that it's not going to happen at all. You can't go lower than not happening at all. So this minus 20% is not making sense. Let's look at a few more. If I toss a coin, the probability that I'll get a head or a tail is 100% or one. Next one, if I roll a die, the probability that I'll get an integer less than seven is one. And the last one, if I roll a die, the probability that I'll get an integer greater than zero is 0.5 or 50%. Again, pause the video. Which of these statements make sense to you? Which of them don't? Let's look at the first one. Well, when you toss a coin, you either get a head or a tail. These are the only two options. So you'll probably get one of them and, and the chances of that is 100%. That's all you're gonna get, head or tail. So, so yes, this does make sense. I'll either get a head or a tail and, and that's 100% guaranteed. Let's look at the next one. The probability that I'll get an integer less than seven is one. So when you roll a die, you get integers. You get one, two, three, four, five, or six. All of these integers are less than seven. So no matter what you get, that integer will be less than seven. And that's also 100% guaranteed. So the probability is one. So that's also making sense. Let's look at the last one. When you roll a die, you'll get an integer greater than zero. This statement is saying that the probability is 0.5 or just 50%. Well, it's not 50%. You will get integers greater than zero. You'll get one, two, three, four, five, or six. All of them are definitely greater than zero. So no matter what you get, your integer will be greater than zero. And the chances of that, 100%, the probability of that is one, not 0.5. So this also does not make sense. Now let me take you to one more scenario. Let's say there are red, green, and blue balls in a bag, and we pick a ball at random. And let's also say that the probability of getting a red ball is 20%, and the probability of getting a green ball is 40%. That's given. Now the question is, what is the probability of getting a red or a green ball? And while we're at it, let's have one more. What is the probability of getting a blue ball? Again, pause the video, use your common sense, figure out the answers for these two questions. Okay. So let's, let's do this together. We have a sample space and the sample space has red, green, and blue balls. And we know that the probability of getting a red ball is 20%. We also know that probability of getting a green ball is 40%. And there's this third scenario where we can get a blue ball. Now the question is, what is the probability of getting a red or a green ball? Well, getting a red is 20%, getting a green is 40%. And we can pick any of them and it'll work for us. We can get red or green. So the chances of us getting a red or a green should be, by common sense, the sum of 20 and 40. It should be 60%. Think about it. There's more chance that you can get 
either a red or a green ball then getting any single one of them the chances add up the the probability of getting a red or a green ball should be the probability of getting a red ball plus the probability of getting a green ball and let's look at the last one the probability of getting a blue ball well there's the only other color left so if red or green combine give me a 60% probability this number should be 100 minus 60 40% so the probability of getting a blue ball should be by common sense 40% so i think now we're ready to look at the axiomatic approach to probability that's what the name of this approach is axiomatic that comes from the word axiom an axiom is a statement that is accepted as true without proof and serves as the starting point for further reasoning and arguments so think of this as a building block and this approach says that you need three basic fundamental axioms and you can build everything else that you know about probability using just these three axioms the first one says probability of an event can't be negative then we have the axiom 2 which says the probability of everything that's possible should add up to 1 which means the probability of the sample space should be equal to 1 and third one is the probability of the union of two mutually exclusive events which means that there is no overlap between these two events when that happens the probability of the union is the sum of their individual probabilities in this case you can add the probabilities up and in math world this is how you write them so probability of e any event should be greater than equal to 0 the probability of the sample space should be equal to 1 and for the last one this is what we have if a intersection b is 0 which means there is no overlap there was no overlap between getting a red ball and a green ball So because there is no overlap the intersection is zero in this case we can say that the probability of a union b in this case probably getting a red ball or a green ball is equal to the sum of their individual probabilities so you can add the probability of getting a red ball to the probability of getting the green ball and these are your three fundamental statements that are accepted as true without proof well personally i think that they don't need to be proved because we can deduce them using common sense which is what we did in the first half of this video all right so let's practice what you've just learned we have a sample space s and it has six sample points w1 to w6 and the question is which of the following assignments of probabilities to each outcomes are valid so let's see what we have we have these five different outcomes and we have to figure out which of these outcomes are valid and which of them are not valid so what we really need to do is check whether the axioms are true or not in each of these cases we have the first axiom which says all events should have probability greater than equal to 0 and with the second axiom which says the sum of all probabilities the probability of the sample space should be equal to 1 and we don't really need the third axiom here because we're not taking union of any of these the first one has equal probabilities all of them have the probability 1 by 6 so let's check for axiom 1 are all of them greater than 0 yes they're all greater than 0 if we add all of them up do we get 1 is the probability of the sample space 1 let's see 6 times 1 by 6 is actually 1 so yes that's also true which means outcome a is valid let's look at the next one In the next one we have w1 with probability 1 and the rest of them have probability 0. But 0 is valid. It should be 0 or more. So yes, axiom 1 is valid here. What about axiom 2? Adding all of them up will give me 1. So yes, axiom 2 is also valid. So we can say that the outcome B is valid. What about the next one, outcome C? Well, we have very different probabilities here, but two of them are negative. even if we had one of them negative i would have said that this is not valid axiom 1 is not true here i don't even have to look for axiom 2 this outcome is not valid what about the next one well we have all the probabilities greater than equal to 0 so axiom 1 is valid what about axiom 2 if we add all of them up do we get 1 well no look at the last one this itself is greater than 1 that's 3 by 2 that's 1.5 so if you're going to add the remaining 5 to this it will be way more than 1 so no axiom 2 is not valid which means this outcome is also not valid and the last one all of them are positive so axiom 1 is true this one is 0.6 and this one is 0.5 if you add these two up you will go above 
if you add all of them up you'll go way above one which means exam two is not valid this one is also not a valid outcome so now we have a good understanding of what these axioms are and how we can use them to check whether outcomes are valid or not